What's going on Moon here, Algebra Bros? It's the final installment of the solution videos to the example on page 5 of the section 7.3 note packet. In this video, we're going to find the angle of rotation. Alright, keep in mind that since there was a cross term in our quadratic form to start with, you know, it represents a conic section, which we know now was an ellipse. Uh, that was rotated out of standard position. So one thing that we can address is, you know, just exactly what angle was the ellipse taken through when it was rotated out of standard position. We're going to enlist the help of our matrix P. So we'll bring that in. Now keep in mind it's a 2 by 2 first column. Has the entries 1 over radical 2, 1 over radical 2. Second column has negative 1 over radical 2. 1 over radical 2 as its entries. And the secret or the trick to figuring out the angle of rotation is to set this equal to that matrix uh, P that was given at the bottom of page 4 of the note packet. So as a refresher, it was a rotation matrix, and its first column had the trig functions cosine theta, sine theta. And its second column had the trig functions negative sine theta and again cosine theta. So when we're constructing our matrix P in these types of problems, you know, we're actually constructing specific uh, you know, values for each of these trig functions. Um, so it's our goal to figure out you know, what angle theta would produce these uh, values in our specific matrix P. And if we can figure out that angle theta, that tells us the angle of rotation that this ellipse went through. Um, so one way to figure out, you know, that value of theta uh, is, is to maybe go ahead and set, uh, you know, corresponding rows equal to each other. Uh, you don't necessarily need to do both of them. You just uh, pick the rows that seem a little easier to you. Like, you know, for me, I'm looking at row 2, uh, setting that equal to row 2 of rotation matrix P um, just kind of reduces the work with negatives that would be required if you were to use row 1 instead of each of these. So we know from a result way at the beginning of class that you know the only way two matrices are going to be equal to each other is if the corresponding entries are equal to each other. So that said, you know we can form a couple of equations here, one of those being sine theta equals 1 over radical 2, and the other being cosine theta equals 1 over radical 2. Oops. All right, both need to hold true in order for these two matrices to really equal each other. So we need to determine what angle theta is such that sine theta is equal to 1 over radical 2 and cosine theta is equal to 1 over radical 2 as well. All right, hopefully that's popping into your minds. If not, I'll provide it for you. That's going to be theta equals pi over 4. In terms of degrees, that would be theta equals 45 degrees. Okay. So it looks as though, you know, when we introduce that cross term into the quadratic form there, you know, the ellipse uh, gets rotated counterclockwise by 45 degrees or pi over 4 radians, all right? And so this is an example of how you would find that angle of rotation, all right? It, it depends on um, your matrix P that you construct. Keep in mind that it needs to be constructed such that the determinant is equal to positive 1. Um, and what we do once we have our uh, proper matrix P is we set it to uh, the general rotation matrix here, uh, which you're seeing on the right-hand side of the equation, um, right underneath the uh, work heading. Okay, then you set corresponding entries equal to each other, and you can deduce your angle that way. All right, and at long last, we are finally finished with this example. Of course, if you have any questions for me about this solution, uh, to this video or any of the other ones, feel free to reach out to me. Otherwise, really appreciate you watching the videos to um, fill out the solution to this example. 
and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thank you.